Hey guys, welcome back to Lux Biz. I'm Tatiana, and today I'm joined by my handsome boyfriend, Stefan James. And we're gonna share with you some of our biggest challenges, failures, and mistakes that we've made in our businesses. Because guess what? We're all gonna make mistakes. That's part of business, that's part of life. But what's most important is that we learn from them and we learn the valuable lessons that they bring. So, Stefan, maybe you can share a little bit about who you are for those who don't know him. Yeah, so my name is Stefan James. Uh, I've got a business called Project Life Mastery, which is an online brand that consists of a YouTube channel, podcast, blog, um, in the self-development niche, but also teaching people how to build an online business. And I've been doing online business and marketing for about 10 years now. And I've tried and done almost everything there is out there. I've done affiliate marketing, information products, selling physical products on Amazon, uh, publishing books on Amazon, coaching, consulting, a lot of different business models. Um, but I, I'd say for me, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back when I first started, like the earlier days, the biggest challenges that I faced. And one of the biggest ones for me at the time is I discovered a method of doing affiliate marketing where, and affiliate marketing, if you're not familiar, is the process of you earning a commission by promoting someone else's product. Um, so at the time, what I do, what I learned and what I did was I created these little blogs, okay, these little small little blogs uh, centered around a specific product that I was an affiliate for. So an example of this would be a Vitamix blender. I had, uh, I bought the domain name at the time, I think it was buyvitamix.net. And I had one also for a Blendtec blender. I had one for Fitbit, back when Fitbit was kind of like the early days and everything, and a few other products like that. And so I, I learned to create these little blogs that maybe had five pages of content on it. And the, the blog and the content was optimized for specific search terms that people were searching for in Google. So one of the ways that I learned to get traffic and people to come to my websites is I found out what people are searching for. You could do research for that. And I found out people were searching in Google to type in where to buy Vitamix, how to buy Vitamix. So I'd create this article on my little blog that would say, hey, where to buy Vitamix and provide details and instructions. And then on that blog post, I'd have an affiliate link from Vitamix so that when people click on that link and they go and buy a Vitamix blender, I would earn a commission from that. And everything was tracked automatically through cookies. It's great, it's a fantastic way of making money. So I learned this method and I was learning search engine optimization and how to do this. And at the time for me, um, a big goal that I had, this is when I was maybe 23 years old, was to make $5,000 a month passive income. For me, that was like a huge milestone because I, I had made some money before then and I started off first making a dollar online and then a hundred bucks and a couple hundred bucks and a couple thousand bucks. But for me, that five grand was, was a big one because that's 60 grand a year and that would be more than enough to cover my expenses, my lifestyle, so I'd be financially free. Mm -hmm. So I worked, I worked my ass off. I, 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 you know, the strategy that I was doing was great. It was working. One of the ways that uh, I was, um, you know, be able to rank my websites in the search engine, so that'd be like first place or on the first page in Google, is you get a lot of backlinks. Um, backlinks are basically links that you get from other websites linking to your website or blog. And the more backlinks you had at the time, then the more Google would be like, wow, this is a pop, must be a popular website. They're gonna rank you a lot higher for it. So I was really into all this SEO stuff and I had a bunch of these websites and I finally achieved this goal, $5,000 a month. And for me, that was life changing. That was like one of the biggest things, even more than making a million dollars, making that five grand a month was like powerful for me. And sure enough, I achieved it and I was living this great life and I was you know, not really working that much and I was living the lap, you know, the uh, four hour work week lifestyle, I guess you could say. And sure enough, what happened was um, Google had made some changes to their algorithms. They made some updates, which I did not anticipate for, I did not prepare for, I didn't even, you know, I, I, oftentimes when you're first building your business you can, and you're making money, you're having, having success, you can be a little bit naive to think that everything's just gonna last forever and that you don't have to adapt to different changes and whatnot. And sure enough, what happened was Google made these changes. The traffic that I was getting, the money that I made disappeared almost overnight. And for me, that was tough, that was challenging. Um, I did everything I could to try to recover it, all the research that I could, but a lot of other websites too, they're kind of in a state of shock as well. Nobody really knew the answers or solutions. It's very frustrating oftentimes when you're at the mercy of one website like Google, but you can't, 
you know, you can't get a hold of them. You can't find the, the answers for that. And I ended up spending more time and money trying to fix and resolve that. And, um, you know, sure enough, it wasn't able to recover from it. And from that experience, there was actually a lot of good and blessings that came from that. It actually led me down a different path, a different direction of making money online, which was actually publishing books on Amazon, which I ended up having way more success with that I often think back, if it wasn't for that failure that I had, that challenge, I would have never, you know, I would have never been open to trying different things and trying to go down this path or be resourceful and trying to figure things out. So I'd say, I'd say one of the biggest lessons that I got from that is oftentimes the failures, the challenges that you have, you know, if you look back, they can be blessings for you because they might point you in a different direction or you might try something different that you would no, no, normally never try if it wasn't for that. And then the other uh, valuable lesson that I got from that too was that you can't have all your eggs in one basket. You can't be so dependent on one platform or one website for your entire income. One strategy, that's, that's horrible. Um, that's also known as a one-legged stool. If you've got a one-legged stool, it can maybe balance for so long, but eventually if a gust of wind comes along, some adversity, then that's gonna fall over. So what I've since learned is that you have to build a, a Parthenon. A Parthenon is a structure that has multiple pillars. And so, for example, if you have websites and they're getting traffic and all the traffic is from Google, that's very high risk because if Google makes a change, that can wipe you out. If you've got an Amazon business but all your traffic is from Amazon, that's very high risk as well. So what you wanna do is build multiple pillars. So maybe if you're you know, getting traffic from Google, great, but maybe you could also add in social media, Facebook, and then Instagram, and then you know, YouTube, and then podcasting, and then pay-per-click advertising. So that way, if something happens with you know, something over here or something over there, the structure still remains, it still remains standing. And then also the other lesson I got from that too is that you know, at the time I was building these little thin, you know, five page blogs, but you have to always think long term. Is this going to last? Is this align in the best interests of what Google, the search engines, you know, with what they want? And the answer was no, because, you know, what Google wants when people search for things, they want authoritative websites to show up. They want uh, websites that are adding value to people, that when people click on it and they go to the website, there's valuable content that's there. And so for me, I, I, I think I, I was using a technique that was kind of more gaming the system. And not that the content wasn't valuable or anything, but it wasn't a, a big website. And what I've learned since then, and what I've done with Project Life Mastery, is I've built a brand. You know, built one brand, one website, build it up over several years, put high quality content on it. Because when you do that, Google's gonna love you. The search engines are gonna love you. They're gonna they're gonna rank you high um, you know, up in the search results and everything and people are gonna naturally link back to you and, and share your content on social media and that kind of takes care of itself. So you know, oftentimes we, we try to take shortcuts but the shortcuts, they don't last and you can't really shortcut the process. And so instead what I've learned is that do you think is the right way from the start? You know, uh, build, build your website, build an authority website, can be consistent with it, keep putting out high quality content. And, and you know, that's really the 80-20 of it is if you focus on that, then, then you're gonna get the traffic, the results, everything's gonna follow from that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. So many great points right there. So many golden nuggets. Thanks yeah. for sharing. I haven't thought about that uh, experience in a long time, but it was, you know, looking back is one of the best things that ever happened to me. So. I'm actually grateful for those challenges. Yeah. So whatever you might be going through right now in your business or getting started, understand, you know, you, you know, in the moment it might seem painful, painful and hard, but when you look back, you get perspective yeah. over several years, you're like, wow, you know what? I'm grateful for that because of what I've learned, who yeah. I became and the different course of actions that you took. You can always choose to ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? Yeah. When you engrave that into your mind and that becomes habit for you to ask, what can I learn from this? You'll always see that it may be a blessing in some way. And it might take you a month, it might take you a year, it might take you 10 years to learn the lessons, but there's always valuable lessons in every challenge of life. So, I have two that I wanna share, and I'm not sure which one I would like to start with. Um, Okay, well, let me start with first picking a supplier. 
So I find that a lot of people, this is a big part of uh, sourcing products and this channel is about sourcing products on Amazon and Amazon FBA. So for me, I wanted to start a lingerie line because uh, it kind of went with the flow of my current brand and it's something that I always wanted to do. So about a year ago, I embarked on this project and I contacted several suppliers and got all these samples and then uh, one of the suppliers, the quality of the samples was far superior than all the other suppliers. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. But the problem was the contact, the way that the supplier was in contact with me was not great right off the bat. They just were slow to contact me back. There was a lack of rapport. I would say a little bit of a lack of respect for my time. Um, and immediately it was kind of a red flag for me. But because I found the quality of these products to be just so great, I ignored it. And I said, you know what, it's okay. Uh, I'm just going to go with the supplier anyways. So I put my deposit in and, you know, something that should take no longer than maybe a month and a half to produce ended up taking one year. I'm not even kidding you guys, I got the package yesterday for the samples. It's insane how long it took. So the problem was, was that just the lack of communication with the supplier, they were just very slow with everything. And I also got very busy at that time and I kind of put this project on the side. I said it's okay because I'm busy with other things. But my lesson from this is that when you have that gut feeling right off the bat, instinctually you kind of know like this supplier there's so many red flags here and there don't just ignore it go with your gut you know what's right and because you know if you just ignore some things like that later down the line it's going to cost you more it happened a second time with a second supplier for the same lingerie company i hired a company in china for all of the packaging and branding and this supplier uh, they were responsive but they were just it was just such a weird type of communication that we had, almost like children bickering. And um, they had made a mistake at one point for this gift wrap paper that I wanted. I created, this tissue paper. So when people took out the lingerie, there was this nice gift wrap paper that had my branding. It had words like confidence, sexy, lux doll, all these empowering words. It was really important for me for people to see that, to feel that. But when they printed it, they printed it with just my brand name. And I said, that's not the artwork that I provided you. Please reprint everything. And they would not reprint it. And they basically for two weeks went back and forth with me. Please, please, Tatiana, if you don't accept the artwork that we created, then my boss is going to fire this person. Basically making me feel bad for uh, their Very mistakes. Safe, yeah. And I just thought it was so ridiculous and they didn't want to reimburse me for it. And it was just really, really um, a waste of my time. It was frustrating. So again, there was red flags with that supplier from the beginning and I ignored them. So it's just like when you're getting into a relationship or getting married, if there's red flags, you need to listen to your gut and not just push them aside because what will happen five, 10 years into the relationship, into the marriage? So same thing with your suppliers. Know from the beginning and uh, be smart about it because this is a business decision. And for me, I could have spent more time researching other suppliers who may have had the same quality or superior quality, same thing with the packaging, but I just didn't put that much attention into it. So that was my lesson with that. And I think, you know, with that said too, is there's also a bit of risk being so dependent on one supplier too, because yes. what if there are, there is a disagreement, there is a breakup or something like that. And then now your business is stuck because that was the only supplier that could actually do that for you, where instead it's, it's great to find many options, many yeah. suppliers. Don't just settle on one that you find that's great. You know, challenge yourself to find if maybe a few more. Just in the event communication's not good, it doesn't work out, or, or something like that mm -hmm. comes up, that you could have a plan B, a backup, um, you know, different suppliers Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. That's what I learned with the lingerie line. So after, you know, I already paid the deposit for the lingerie, and I decided to continue with the order. And so now that I received the, the products and they received at the fulfillment center, I'm no longer using that supplier. I now have contacts with three other suppliers that have the exact same quality and far better communication. Mm -hmm. So I learned that lesson quite quickly and so now for the future I know whenever I'm launching new products I need to have a list of suppliers as backup options. Yeah. So my second one that I just want to touch on real quick 
it comes down to quality and for me uh, I in the beginning of my business I was always trying to find ways to save money because I didn't have money and then this habit kind of stuck with me it's hard to break a habit sometimes and for me I'm pretty good at finding deals and finding ways to do things on my own to save money for my business um, so when it came down to website development I was trying to I was almost like cheaping out on it I was getting these freelancers uh, all over the world that would just kind of edit things here, edit things there, um, and not really sticking with one uh, website developer that was just able to stick with me long term to build my website um, and do it properly so that not just aesthetically it looks good, but functionality, like it really works. So what happened was I found a website developer who made my website look good, but completely messed up the back end of the website. and. What ended up happening was every month this year, until about a month ago, there was problems with my website. Uh, problems where people couldn't check out, they couldn't complete their orders. Um, so when I tried to save a couple hundred, maybe 300 to 500 dollars on a website developer, ended up costing me tens of thousands of dollars and lost sales. So you have to really think of the the larger perspective of the issue and for me I was just trying to save a little bit of money and it ended up costing me a lot more money so now my lesson is you know I've gone with a website developer that is very reliable much more high-end someone who communicates uh, very efficiently same time zone as me I'm paying more money but guess what even in the last month of my website actually working properly I've made an extra 20k than I did the last few months just because my website has been up and running normally like a normal website so yeah it's a, it's a big lesson for me don't always try and go the cheap route with things that are of this high importance yeah I've, I've been there many times too where you're hiring different people and you know you're, you're trying to save some money here and there but it ends up always kind of biting you down the road so I agree you know sometimes yeah. just invest the little bit of extra money to get a quality person that is going to actually get the job done the right way versus sometimes you hire someone too like the different designers and developers you hire it ends up cost like yeah you're saving money but it's actually taking up a lot more time because there's so much revisions back and forth and you have to babysit them and like a lot of things are just kind of common sense of how to position things or how things should look or you know the feel of it or the font or the space all those things like you're, you're, you're having to basically kind of do all the work for them by constantly just like pointing out this and this all the, it's just so frustrating to have to deal with that so um, when you when you get someone who's an A player they just make your life so much easier yeah definitely worth it yeah so I'll share with you guys uh, one more of mine um, so for me I, I was already having quite a bit of success in my business I was teaching people how to publish books on Amazon which is one of the ways that um, one of the first ways that I made a six-figure income online and uh, I was publishing books on Kindle, paperback books, audio books, doing very well with that. I had a lot of students and still do, still teach that to this day, um, that were also going through my program, my trainings, getting a lot of great results with it. So I had this idea of creating a software and this was a software idea that I had that I was like, you know what, this software would really help and benefit my customers. And I, I knew that it'd be a success, you know, that you know, I, I researched and made sure, you know, this is a, a pain point that a lot of people had, which was uh, being able to get reviews for their books on Amazon. And the challenge was I had never created a software before in my life. And I just thought, oh, you know, I'm just gonna hire a developer, I'm gonna tell them what I want, and I'm gonna get this software developed. And, you know, sure enough, I, you know, it took me a long time just to find someone, find someone that uh, could actually do what I was looking for and I had invested quite a bit of money, quite a bit of time in this. And in the end, um, after months of putting time, money, energy, effort into this project, turns out that it, it, like it just didn't, wasn't gonna work. No. And what happened was uh, like the way of, like Amazon had made some changes based on how you get reviews and different guidelines that they had. And so it kind of made my software obsolete, but also, you know, I was so busy with some, some other, other things that I was doing in my business that here I was venturing into something that was just totally out of my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Like it was just out of my area of expertise. And I think what happens oftentimes is we take for granted, um, you know, what you've already mastered. Like if you're already having success with something in your business, mm -hmm. you're doing very well with that. 
Oftentimes, one of the traps that a lot of entrepreneurs get into is they have the success, and as an entrepreneur, you always have all these other ideas. And so you wanna implement all these different ideas, all these different things simultaneously, and you know, here you, know, you think you, you're gonna be successful with anything that you put your mind to, and that's true to an extent, but what happened was by me kind of shifting gears, putting my attention and focus into something that was really kind of brand new for me, and learning that from scratch, when I've already have a level, a level of skills and mastery and success over here, it didn't really make much sense. Um, because I could have put that time, that energy, that money more into over here what I was already having success with and scale and ramp that up a lot better versus you know, trying to now shift gears into something brand new. Yes. And a mistake that I made is I just tried to do too much. I, I overcommitted myself on too many projects. Um, you know, I got a little bit too carried away thinking I'm gonna do this, 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 all these different things versus kind of reeling that in and maybe saying, yeah, you know, I want to do this eventually one day, but for now I'm going to focus on this because at the same time, there's also an opportunity cost. You know, when you're putting your time into this over here, mm -hmm. the time that you're putting in, there's an opportunity cost from that, that I could have put it instead that time into a different project that would have grown my existing business and done so much better with that. So I've learned to be more strategic about the projects that I take on, what I commit to doing. Um, you know, a lot of people I see, they wanna do all these different business models simultaneously. And often it doesn't make sense to do that. You know, they wanna sell physical products and books and affiliate marketing and info, like they wanna do it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you gotta understand that each one of those is a different learning curve, a different level of mastery that you have to um, be able to get to in order to be successful with that. So often what's best is focus on one thing first. Maybe it's Amazon, maybe it's publishing. Build that up to a certain level and then once you're in a better position, now you can kind of branch off a little bit more. And I think what I would have done differently on that project too is once you make money and you have some success, you can be more strategic with that. You don't have to do all the work yourself. You can, you can get a business partner, someone that maybe already has experience creating software, they're a developer, and I could have done my expertise, which is more the marketing side, and I could have partnered with that person. They could have done the development side and we'd complement each other really well with that. So little things like that, I think that's how at a certain point you can branch off to do these other projects, is just be strategic and be smart and not try to do everything uh, everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And you know, I, I mentioned that in the beginning of my business, I tried to do a lot of things myself to save money. And what happened was, you know, I love the the idea of just stick to what you're good at and outsource the rest. And for me, I was doing all these design things. I was doing Photoshop, like all this crazy video editing, all these things that I just wasn't a master at. And I just, I didn't enjoy it and I wasn't good at it, but I did it anyways because I wanted to save money. And what ended up happening was the finished result of what I created was subpar. And I ended up having to pay someone to do it anyways. And so that ended up just being lost time. So I think it really comes down to just valuing your time, knowing what your time is worth. And as you become more successful, your time is going to be worth more, but just put a number on it and realize, okay, if my time is worth X amount of dollars, and if I can pay someone X amount of dollars less than what my time is worth, then it's definitely worth outsourcing this and hiring someone else to complete the task. Yeah, I, I think you know we're all gonna go through failures. We're all gonna go through challenges in your journey. Mm -hmm. And I think hopefully what you guys can learn from us sharing this and being vulnerable and transparent with you guys is that it's normal. Like, you know, we're all gonna go through different things. Hopefully you guys can learn from our mistakes, our challenges, so you don't have to repeat them yourself. But Nobody gets in business and never fails. Nobody gets in business and never makes a mistake. So don't let this make you be more of a perfectionist. I think the biggest failure in life is not trying, not doing anything um, versus actually going for it. There is a chance of failure um, and making mistakes, but at least you're in the game and you have much more of a chance of actually succeeding than just sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. So. Go for it, guys. Try yeah. it. Yeah. So if you guys want to hear part two of this video where I'm going to share two more major challenges and mistakes, Stefan's going to share one more, yeah. then you'll have to go to Stefan's YouTube channel, which is called Project Life Mastery. So I'm going to insert the video here. You just click on this video and it's going to direct you to part two of the video, or you can go down to the description box and click on the link there, or in the comments, I'll pin the video there as well. So be sure to check out part two, a lot of valuable uh, 
challenges and lessons that you'll learn from. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.